हेलो गाइस माय नेम इज अमित सनी 27 जून इट इज एंड वी आर टेकिंग डेली एमसीक्यू सीरीज हियर मिशन 2020 वी आर टेकिंग एंड इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट मेमोराइजेशन ऑफ ऑल दीस फैक्ट्स इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इन द मॉर्निंग द हिंदू लेसन इज कमिंग एंड द इवनिंग द एमसीक्यू लेसन इज कमिंग बट स्पेसिफिकली फॉर दिस लेसन यू हैव टू डिराइव योर ओन एबिलिटीज दैट हाउ यू कैन रिमेंबर दीस फैक्ट्स बिकॉज़ द आर सब्जेक्ट्स आर स्पेसिफिक वंस लाइक वी हैव अ हिस्ट्री क्वेश्चन टुडे एंड इन दैट क्वेश्चन यू विल सी दैट isolated facts you cannot remember in history because there are too many facts so uh, in history facts you need to remember the context always and you should know the story there because it's like a story and uh, whether we talk about the uh, indian independence phase or whether we talk about the uh, particular reform phase th- this question is from the reforms phase so all these details which are connected one and uh, one thing led to another so in this form you must remember the facts so this way i have provided you the explanation there so you can read everything in the pdf and for other subjects like polity and geography you can go with isolated questions and the isolated explanations so there is no problem with that but there is a problem in history if you just want to remember some uh, specific facts in a isolated way so let's start the lesson and uh, affordable courses by study iq very affordable one and the link is given below the video all the description is given there and you can call on these numbers and uh, these uh, uh, the website address is also given here pdf i will upload here so you can get them and you can follow me on uh, instagram also and it is my telegram's link where i upload these pdfs because the facebook page was not working yesterday so that you also can join you will find the link on the facebook group only and this link is also working next the president makes an address to lok sabha at the start of the budget session you see budget session is there every year we all know about that that means president will make an address every year so that's the case in article 86 1 and 87 in both these articles it is given that president would address a joint session not the lok sabha it's wrong it's a joint session of both the houses and it will uh, talk about the government policies agenda of the next year and mainly it is uh, a kind of a explanation of the government's working only so president makes that this kind of address before the uh, joint session and it happens every year in the starting of the year means starting of the budget session and when the new government is elected first time first first session is there that also will be addressed by president there so the way uh, we have got the uh, the new government back and uh, now the presidential address was there and after the presidential address there is a motion of thanks motion of thanks would be a thank by the ruling party mps to the president because uh, uh, president has explained their agendas so it is not brought up by opposition mps it is by ruling party mps so this is again wrong and uh, the option d none would be the answer here you can see president makes a special address i always say polity has a question in every line that's why i say thousand times you need to repeat the lakshmikanth book so a special address Uh, in this way only they will uh, they will ask you the question and to a joint sitting of the both houses and beginning of the first session remember just first session of uh, every government and every year after an election and the first session of the budget session so it's a statement of government policy which has to be approved by the cabinet cabinet has to approve it and the president highlights the legislative and policy activities and achievements during the preceding year okay so it talks about the preceding year also and the uh, future agenda of the next year also so that's the case it's a total explanation of the government's uh, working so that's why there is a motion of thanks moved by the ruling party mps in each house means the address is over now they will go to their respective houses and in their each house they will bring this motion of thanks but the specific condition is that this motion of thanks should uh, be put on the vote and uh, uh, it should be passed if it's a failure that means government has not majority and the ruling party mps are uh, rebelling against the government and that means the government uh, would have to go so motion of thanks must be passed must be passed remember that okay so it's it must be passed and uh, there are some instances and you tell me which are those where government has to go if the motion is not passed it happens in this case it happens in the non confidence uh, motion also and some other also so that's the case and uh, they will go for discussion uh, after this motion of thanks for 2 3 4 days and uh, uh, these uh, details of the presidential address is given in 86 and 87 and rule 16 to 24 are also applicable 
which are the procedure and conduct of the, of the business in lok sabha why lok sabha because in the joint session the session runs on the rules and regulations of the lok sabha and speaker presides that we all know that okay so motion of thanks and uh, there may be amendments which can be brought up by opposition party members because they would want a kind of a uh, change in this address because it's more about the government and they will oppose it uh, in some stances so this uh, may be accepted by the speaker okay so that's the case after that uh, the notice uh, would be accepted of the amendments and they would discuss that but normally these are not passed hardly uh, till now two three amendments are passed because uh, uh, the ruling party has its majority and they do not let it pass and the motion of thanks is also not defeated normally because they have the majority there okay so that's the case and some limitations are also there like uh, these uh, matters will not be referred which are not directly the responsibility of the central government maybe some suggestions are there but if they are not the responsibility of the central government then these things can be uh, uh, not uh, presented there okay so that's the case things are given here in the pdf everything is given here niti ayog recently uh, we talked about uh, this healthy state progressive india index and for two days i have been talking about this report on ranks of states and uts you see this report was specific when kerala topped the list but it's a different thing that uh, there are certain categories like larger states 21 large states are there then there are smaller states and then there are uts so uh, 21 large states in that category kerala is at the top and up at the worst uh, place and in the smaller states category mizoram is at the first rank and uh, uh, manipur second and other uh, categories going on so this is correct first is wrong because it says it's a first edition no first edition came in february 18 it is the 19th year and they took the base year as 15 16 and the current reference year for this report is 17 18 so this particular period of uh, two years they are taking here and only two is the answer Niti Aayog has released a second edition of report, and this is the title. This is important. F uh, after the new government, this is the biggest report by N Niti Aayog here, and technical assistance is taken from World Bank here. That is also to be remembered. And the reference year is 1718, base year is 1516. That's the case. So two years period they are taking here, and three categories: larger states, Kerala at the top, and uh, uh, the Andhra Pradesh second, Maharashtra third. and uh, haryana rajasthan and jharkhand they are the top 3 ranking states in terms of annual increment in this uh, performance so they are the uh, uh, better performer this this year okay up bihar at the worst places up at the uh, bottom so 21 large states and uh, apart from that eight small states are there so uh, mizoram is at the first place and chandigarh in the uts uh, category first okay so that's the case and uh, empowered action group you see some states which are called backward and bimaru states and these are empowered action group states which needs uh, which need uh, empowered actions so five states bihar uttar pradesh uttarakhand madhya pradesh and odisha they saw a overall decline in the health index so that's a, again a problem already very much uh, troubled states and uh, so called bimaru states and uh, the decline in the health index so a uh, huge region 23 parameters were there and on the basis of that they are uh, assessing the issue you see they are taking the administrative aspect they are taking the infrastructure house aspect they are taking the fund transfer aspect in the nhm uh, scheme and apart from that total fertility rate uh, low birth weight tuberculosis treatment hiv treatment their success rates and all so everything they are taking here total fertility rate means a uh, female uh, age from 40, uh, 15 to 49 actually it should be 19 but it is 15 to 49 in this particular age how many uh, kids she gives birth to so that number is the total fertility rate 15 to 49 and positive correlation has been found uh, uh, between the health index scores and the economic development levels of states based on the nsdp the state domestic products net state domestic products so that is the case here there is a wide gap and there is a particular uh, a gap of 2.5 times means kerala in kerala what is the condition every fifth kid is malnutrition so that's the case in up every second child is the malnutrition child so so much uh, stark differences are there and uh, the suggestion is that center must go for 2.5% of the uh, 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 gdp as health allocation in the budget but it is the target by government of 2025 means it's it's a it's really a shocking thing that in this huge country 
till 2025 we will be able to spend 2.5 percent of the gdp and that is again a uh, again a, a particular effort it's not a surety right now what is the level 1 to 1.5 percent and in according to uh, many many reports it's just one percent of the gdp right now so that's why its reports are very dismal here and they need to go for uh, towards 2.5 to 5 percent that is must today but not possible by them so currently this is the spending here and uh, these uh, additional things are given here in the main chance writing you can write all these points next regarding fall army worm you see maize uh, crop is attacked mainly and a big scare all over the world maize is the third most important cereal crop in india that is correct and rice is the uh, the biggest staple crop in india mostly eaten and um, mainly in the eastern part of india second wheat and third is maize nine percent of the total production is of maize in this country so this is a correct option second statement fall army worm is fungus native to africa no it is not a fungus this is wrong because it says it's a worm it's a worm non coordinate uh worm and in hindi they call it kida so uh it has its own life stages like the caterpillar larva stage is the most drastic one then uh, uh, it develops into a flying uh, a flying uh, worm so uh, it has many uh, developmental stages it is native to americas actually and after 100 years when it was found in americas it came to africa in 2016 in nigeria they found it in in 2016 and some uh, areas were there which were highly um, uh, maize producing states and uh, countries their crops were devastated because of this uh, particular fall army worm so destroying uh, the, the nature is that it feeds on many crops not a single crop unlike the earlier incidences where any worm would attack a specific crop and that would be a trouble for that particular crop but it is feeding on many crops like wheat uh, and uh, the maize and sorghum every uh, major crop it is eating so that's why it's a dangerous thing and the bigger dangerous thing is that that when it develops into adult then it grows wings and it can fly up to 100 kilometers within a night per night it can fly up to 100 kilometers so it will be spread very fast so fast it will spread so that's the case and uh, this is wrong first is correct only one is the answer here you can see fall army worm attack this is the caterpillar stage larva stage and in india they are calling it american kida because it is native to americas and it was mainly found last year in uh, shimoga karnataka in the university of agriculture there so in these uh, research fields they found it and they confirmed that it's a four army worm and it's a major uh, scare in this country and you see within six months it is spread to 50 percent of the states 50 percent states and a big loss to the maize crop and it was started uh, with shimoga karnataka true army worm infestation they called it in africa it's a food security threat now assessment by fao of uh, united nations and it said that a 5.5 million dollar uh, uh, loss economic loss was there due to this fall army war 5.5 million dollars and uh, earlier any worm would be limited to a country and it would attack a single crop but now it is spreading globally because it is so surviving and extremely invasive and feeding on maize ragi sorghum uh, wheat all these important crops and uh, almost 50 percent of states of india they are uh, under its uh, uh, range 45 day long life cycle is there and 30 day larva stage and in that stage it feeds a lot enormous amount of food it eats and then it will uh, develop wings and it will fly to some other area so this is why it is very difficult and a uh, dangerous one polyphagus means feeds on multiple crops and that's the case and uh, uh, major maize sorghum that is called jowar and sugarcane crops they all are uh, attacked by this so dangerous stage agriculture and Pro processed food products export development authority it's a authority earlier there was a council it's authority now and december 85 was that year when the act came regarding that so it was established under the act gazette notification was out regarding that so it is not a autonomous organization under ministry of agriculture because it is the export development authority so it is uh, coming under ministry of commerce actually so first is wrong second chairman is not the union minister of agriculture it is actually a member only chairman is appointed by the central government so second is also wrong d none is the answer explanations are given here apeda established by government of india december 85 this act came uh, process food products export development authority act 
and uh, earlier it, it used to be a FPF EPC, the Export Promotion Council for the processed foods. But now agricultural and processed foods both and it's authority now. So that's the case. Statutory body, all these functions are assigned to it. There are a list of scheduled products that it will manage in the uh, areas of export like these uh, uh, dairy products, uh, biscuits, uh, bakery, beverages, all these which are exported from India. So it will uh, manage these uh, uh, situations and uh, one particular task of uh, sugar import that is also given to ABEDA. So that's important. It is uh, the import of sugar and all others are the exported items. So their export is taken by ABEDA and chairman is appointed by central government and uh, ex official members are there like the agriculture marketing advisor to the government of India and one member appointed by central government representing planning commission which is now uh, not there it is Niti Aayog there and uh, all these union ministers they will be members here five members uh, uh, who are representing states and union territories alphabetical order they will be rotated and uh, seven members by central government representing these institutions and uh, five representing the industries there so that is the case and some specialists will be also be there now the history question you need to go through the pdf all explanation is given there in that particular form where you can remember the text and uh, it's like a, a particular development and a sequential development so it is asking about brahmo samaj brahmo samaj established by radharaman roy in 1850 1828 a great personality one of the greatest personality in all the times in india and he uh, raised his voice uh, in 19th centuries starting it that was the starting of the reforms era in india he was a well educated person he knew many languages keshav chandra sen came after him actually uh, in 1833 after uh, five years of establishment of uh, brahma samaj uh, he died rather ramon roy died okay then came the devendranath tagore then Devendranath Tagore uh, established actually the Tatwabodhini Sabha and all and uh, he was very crucial in that and in 1857 he uh, uh, went on retirement Devendranath Tagore went on retirement and he went to Shimla there then came Keshav Sandar Sen Keshav Sandar Sen was uh, totally uh, uh, active missionary uh, like person and uh, he brought many many changes there although the issues raised by all these leaders were really genuine the widow remarriage and the uh, against the sati pratha and uh, the against the child marriage system casteless society intercaste marriages they supported so these all were genuine cases you will uh, see in the pdf there so first and second statements are correct okay there were schism uh, in in these uh, leaders uh, phases in the brahmo samaj and ultimately uh, it got a severe blow after 1857 and in the end Keshav Chandra Sen was the last important leader here and he also failed because uh, all uh, his life he was uh, uh, actually advocating for the widow remarriage and all these issues and against the child marriage issue but he got his underage uh, daughter married to the son of the king of Kuch Bihar so they both were not adults at that time so he himself uh, violate uh, this particular issue and he even brought up a particular Brahmo marriage act also and he violated that act only so because many members saw it as a hypocrisy so they were very much miffed with the case of Chandra Sen and they established this uh, Sadharan Brahmo Samaj not the Devendranath Tagore Devendranath Tagore was uh, in a, on, a, on a different uh, case and he was uh, there earlier in earlier times so Sadharan Brahmo Samaj was the last Samaj Samaj under the Brahma Samaj of India. So that is the case and 1 and 2 is the answer B and explanations are given there in the PDF. You please go through all the PDF. You will, fi you will find all the answers and the specific sequence of all these events because you see the particular bodies, Sabhas which were established. This is the thing that UPSC has been asking for many, many years now in the recent times. It has been asking about uh, these uh, Sabhas and uh, particular bodies too much. Sangat Sabha was very important there they gave up their castes and all practice temperance and uh, being truthful honest and uh, supporting women their education everything they took there Ved Samaj was established in Madras and Pradartha Samaj in Maharashtra when uh, uh, the Brahma Samaj toured all over this country so thanks a lot keep watching and PDF you will get here thanks a lot